Benny, what a terribly hot and humid day it's been. Can you get me a glass of water? Here you go, sir. I can smell something damp. Yeah, it's my clothes. They didn't dry well because of the humidity. So there is a slight damp smell in them. Humidity? I think I've heard it. Oh yes, that lady in the weather report was talking about it. You're right. And to make you understand it better, we are going to learn about various weather conditions. But before that, let me meet my friends here. Hi friends, this is Benny and I am your darling scientist Radhe Krishna, better known as SRK. Let's learn about various weather conditions. So let's zoom into the virtual world. It will be hot in the morning. It will be cloudy during the day. It will be cold at night. To forecast the weather accurately, meteorologists measure the force of the wind with anemometers and its direction with wind vanes. Meteorologists measure the force of the wind with an anemometer, rainfall with a rain gauge, pressure with a barometer, and temperature with a thermometer. What is humidity? Humidity refers to the amount of water vapor in the air. How does water vapor get into the air? Well, our Earth, being a watery planet, is covered with huge water bodies called oceans and smaller water bodies like seas, lakes and rivers. Water vapor in the atmosphere is mainly due to evaporation of water, which is a continuous process. Did you know that the humidity is closely related to the temperature of the air? As the temperature increases, the evaporation in the atmosphere also increases. This causes more humidity. The instrument which is used to measure the humidity is called the hygrometer. Atmospheric humidity has great importance in the sustenance of life as it produces rainfall which brings fresh water for the living beings on the earth. Moreover, it controls the climatic conditions as it helps in the heating and cooling of the atmosphere. You know, Binny, your mother was complaining that you don't go out and play. You keep playing on the computer. It's so hot outside these days. Yes, I heard in the news temperature is hitting 45 degrees Celsius. 45 degrees Celsius? Oh, Professor, that reminds me of how do we measure temperature? I will explain that, but you promise you will play outdoor games too. Okay, I promise. Then let's go to the virtual world. Think about a sunny afternoon in the summers. Oh, how hot will it be? On the other hand, the early mornings in the winter months will be freezing cold, isn't it? Both these uncomfortable conditions arise due to the two extremes of atmospheric temperatures that are high and low. Atmospheric temperature is the temperature you feel every day. In other words, it is the degree of the hotness or coldness of the air around you. The instrument which is used to measure temperature is called thermometer. It consists of nano glass tube filled with mercury or alcohol. Temperature is measured in two scales, the Fahrenheit scale and the centigrade scale. On the Fahrenheit scale, the freezing point of water is 32 degrees Fahrenheit and the boiling point is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. On the centigrade scale or the Celsius scale, the freezing point of water is 0 degrees Celsius and boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. However, the standard unit of measuring the temperature is degrees Celsius. Temperature is measured with a thermometer. This is an instrument made up of a glass tube containing a liquid, either mercury or alcohol. 
the highest temperature reading for a day is known as the daily maximum temperature. The lowest temperature reading for a day is known as the daily minimum temperature. The daily maximum temperature and the daily minimum temperature for a place is used to calculate the daily temperature range. Mean daily temperatures, mean monthly temperatures, average yearly temperatures and annual temperature range. The mean daily temperatures of different places help to compare the temperatures of the places on any given day. For example, the table shows the maximum temperatures, minimum temperatures and the mean daily temperatures of various places on a particular day. It can be seen that Kuala Lumpur has the highest mean daily temperature, while London has the lowest mean daily temperature on that day. Professor, let's finish the class sooner today. I seem to have fever. Oh, is it? Yes, and that too 100 degrees centigrade. <laughs> oh, in that case, you should be boiling. It's 100 degrees centigrade, Binny. Water boils at 100 degrees centigrade. And? And Benny, don't make excuses. I know you don't have fever. There is so much to learn. Let's move on and learn about how rainfall is measured. After a hot and sweltering summer, rainfall brings much joy and relief. Rainfall refers to the amount of rain an area receives over a period of time. Rainfall and its impact vary from place to place. Areas with less rainfall, such as deserts, face acute shortage of water. On the other hand, excess rainfall can cause floods, leading to loss of life and property. Rainfall is measured using an instrument known as a rain gauge. A rain gauge consists of a funnel, a glass bottle, a copper cylinder and a measuring cylinder. The readings from the rain gauge are depicted in a graph in the form of vertical columns. These graphs are known as climographs, show the mean monthly temperature and the monthly rainfall received in a place over a year. Daily rainfall refers to the total amount of rain that falls over 24 hours. It is calculated by measuring rainfall collected in the measuring cylinder of the rain gauge in 24 hours. Monthly rainfall refers to the total amount of rainfall collected throughout the month. Daily rainfall readings for a period of 30 days are added to no monthly rainfall. Similarly, annual rainfall refers to the total amount of rainwater collected throughout the year. There is so much more to weather. I had never thought. For me, it was always only an excuse to escape going out. I hope now it won't be. Do you know how some scientists notice weather changes? Enlighten me! Scientists gather information about the weather of a place by using instruments that are used in weather stations, like weather balloons and ocean buoys. Sometimes, even analysis of sediments layers and fossilized pollen in glaciers and annular rings of old tree trunks are used to study the climate of the past. Wow, that is sure interesting! And do you know how the past climate is studied? Tell quickly! Dendroclimatology is the study of past climate through tree rings. Tree rings allow scientists to observe the direct impact of climate on annual tree growth patterns. Hmm. There is more. The study of climate over thousands of years is called paleoclimatology. I have become a box of knowledge now. On this note, let's do a quick recap. Let's summarize what you've learnt in this module. Humidity refers to the amount of water vapour in the air. Humidity is closely related to the temperature of the air. As the temperature increases, evaporation in the atmosphere also increases. Atmospheric humidity 
has great importance in the sustenance of life as it produces rainfall which brings fresh water for the living beings on the earth. Moreover, it controls the climatic conditions as it helps in the heating and cooling of the atmosphere. Rainfall refers to the amount of rain an area receives over a period of time. Rainfall is measured using an instrument known as a rain gauge. Rainfall readings are used to understand the daily, monthly and annual rainfall pattern of an area. Benny, what have you got? Well, I went to investigate the weather around, so I examined the sand. It's a bit damp and it's a bit cloudy too, so seems it rained outside while we were learning. Wow, that was smart, Benny. <laughs> the weather outside is too cool. I'm rushing to play now. No excuses. Well, she's off. You should go enjoy the weather too. Adios, friends. <laughs>